Okay, in this video we're going to go over how to write a congruency statement for triangles. Okay? Now, in order to do that we need a little bit of preparation. We need to talk about what are the triangle congruency theorems and then how do you write what's the form of a congruency statement. Um, let's get started right away with congruency theorems. There are basically five. So if we're trying to prove that two triangles are congruent or equal or have the same characteristics, right, in terms of like the lengths of sides and the angles that are in the triangle itself, there are actually one, two, three, four, five different theorems that prove that triangles are congruent, okay? SSS is known as side, 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 okay? So basically what this means is that if the three sides of two different triangles <clears throat> are all congruent, or they're all the same, that means that the angles are the same. In other words, the two triangles themselves are congruent, okay? So for example, if I had like this triangle and this triangle here, and I know that that side is congruent to that side, this side is congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to that side, then I can say by the side, side, side congruency theorem, these two triangles are equal or congruent. Okay? That's ex essentially what we're trying to say. That means all the angles are the same inside, etc., etc. Same with one another, the corresponding sides. The other four are the side angle side. Okay? SAS abbreviation. Angle side angle. Angle angle side. And then finally, for right triangles only, okay, hypotenuse leg. Now, let me just talk real briefly about this one more time, hypotenuse leg. These four congruency theorems work for any type of triangle, whether it's an acute triangle, a scaling triangle, uh, an obtuse triangle. But the only one that works for right triangles and remember that a right triangle needs to have a 90 degree angle in it, okay? This is the hypotenuse leg congruency theorem. And we know that in a right triangle, this particular side is called the hypotenuse, okay? So that's why this is just a teeny bit different. These other two, or these other types of triangles don't have a side called a hypotenuse. Right, because a hypotenuse is always opposite a 90 degree angle. Okay, so those briefly, again, you should know these from other videos, are called the congruency theorems. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, how do we write a congruency statement? A congruency statement is what they also call a narrative proof. Okay, now, there is something called a formal proof uh, which I, I think is going out of style, quite frankly. I mean, I know that I'm going to get pushback from some teachers on this, but I think formal proofs uh, are going a bit out of style, and narrative proofs, in keeping with 21st century learning skills and teaching algebra as a language, are probably a little bit more popular, I think. And again, and narrative proofs follow this pattern, if-then statements, okay? And the if statement is when you actually gather your evidence. So you would say something like, if, for example, this side, we'll call it AB, is congruent to side, uh, you know, DE, and you would say, you know, if side or line segment AB is congruent to line segment DE, again, I'm assuming that these are all labeled, and then if, you know, you keep on going with all your proofs, all the evidence that gathers together, and then if it fits one of these patterns, then you say, then triangle, it might be like ABC, is congruent to triangle DEF by, 
whichever uh, theorem you're using. <clears throat> and you'd say maybe by side, side, side. Okay, now, now let, me, let me be a little bit more specific and show you an example. Here we go. <clears throat> so the question is this. Are these two triangles, triangle ABC and triangle DEF, are they congruent? And if so, write a congruency statement that proves this. Now, I'm given a few things already, right? So in the if statement, I'm going to recognize what my givens are. So we'll start by saying if, let's see what we can find here. Well, according to this, line segment AC, right? And there's no particular order to this, by the way. You can just write it down as you see it. So if line segment AC is congruent with the corresponding side DE, so I do this. Okay, so I've got one of the things that's uh, a given. And it looks like angle CAB, angle CAB, looks like it's congruent with angle EDF because of this similar mark here, right? So it's congruent to angle EDF. And it also looks like I have this side as congruent. So and line segment AB is congruent to line segment DE. All right, looks like I've actually been able to identify all the givens from my two triangles, right? <clears throat> now, go briefly over here real quickly and, and just write out what you have. It looks like I've got a side, right? So I'm going to put a little S here. It looks like I've got an angle. It looks like I've got another side that are all the same. And so it looks like if I compare it to my congruency statements, looks like this is the one that closely matches, side angle side, and the angle is in the middle of the two sides. Let's just see if that's true. Is my angle in between my two sides? And it is. Now it has to be exactly in that order, right? The angle in this particular case is called the included angle. And included means that it is between the other two letters. So I could say if line segment AC is congruent to line segment DE and line segment or angle rather CAB is congruent to angle EDF and line segment AB is congruent to line segment DE, then triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Now here's what's important. By, you got to say by the theorem, by the theorem side angle side. And this is called a congruency statement. You have actually written in a narrative form why these two triangles are congruent, and you've provided the proof. Okay? So if, do all the givens, make your observations here, then go ahead and identify what each one of the givens are, make sure they're in the correct order, okay? And then if, you, if it matches one of the congruency theorems, then you say then the two triangles are congruent by whichever theorem you've actually come up with. Okay, I hope that was helpful to you.